in math lab, we've been learning all the exponent rules. So that way, when we get to it in algebra, it's a lot easier. Um, there, I've spent in my past three years teaching algebra, um, there's been some years where we spend a lot of time on each exponent rule. And then there are some years where they only give us like two days to go over all of them. So we're taking it slow in math lab. And we've already learned like adding and subtracting monomials, um, multiplying them, raising them to a power, and now we learned dividing them yesterday. So here's the rule, the quotient rule. What does the word quotient mean? Quotient is what operation? Oh, multiplying. Is it multiplying? Division. Okay. So, like, product rule is multiplying. The product rule said that when we multiply bases, that we add the exponent. Well, the quotient rule says that if we divide bases, we subtract the exponent. So what you do with the exponents on the variables is always like opposite of what's being done to the bases. Okay, so the bases are being divided, but how you do that is by subtracting the exponents. So keep that in mind. Uh, we did like the easier of the examples yesterday. Again, feel free to look at that online. Um, so like, we'll start off with a few today. And the coefficients, the numbers that are in front of the variable, you always treat normally, just like how you've been treating them for years. Um, if it's six over two, you divide them, all right? You get three. If it's negative 15 over negative three, divide it, you get five. Um, if it's a fraction, like four over eight, I mean, that doesn't divide evenly, it's still a fraction, but you want it to be as simplified as possible. So like 36 over 54 simplifies to two thirds. You don't have to struggle with fractions. You can put them in your calculator and it has a button on there, most calculators do, that will tell you what the equivalent fraction or decimal is. So use that. Anyway, let's do some practice. Now with other rules involved. So mixed practice. Look at all the things that are going on in the problem and refer back to your order of operations. So what's my order of operations? Penda. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Right? Parentheses, exponents, multiplying, dividing, and addition, subtraction. Make sure these are in the same step. So like multiplying, dividing, go from left to right. Addition, subtracting, go from left to right. So when I say parentheses, really we're just looking inside the parentheses. Inside, we can't simplify more, so we're done with that. Um, then look at number 13 for any exponents. Do we have like a term raised to a power or something? Yes, we do. Don't worry, we'll have everyone have a chance to share the answers and so make sure we're paying attention. Um, but yeah, we do have this chunk right here, all raised to the power of two. So everything in there gets raised to the power of two. What's three squared plus? Nine, if you don't know that, just put it in your calculator. And then when I have x to the fifth raised to the second power, what's going to be the new exponent on the x? Well, so we're not adding them. Try right again. It's going to be 10 because that's that power rule. Okay. So the power rule says if I have a power raised to a power, we multiply the exponent. So it's five times two there. 
Okay, we still have the denominator. We didn't do anything to it yet. But now we can, because all that's left is to divide them. Does that make sense, question, Okay. So then treat the coefficients like normal. I have nine over 27. Does that divide evenly? Nine divided by 27? No. So simplify the fraction. Do you know what goes into both nine and 27? Three and nine both do. Take the bigger number. So nine goes into itself how many times? And into 27 how many times? Good. So my new fraction is one third. I should need the calculator here. Okay. What do I do with the variables though? If it's dividing like the bases, what do I do with the exponents? <clears throat> According to the quotient rule that we just learned at the top of your paper, we subtract them. So the x to the 10 over x to the 3 is now going to be what? No, 7. Because it's 10 minus 3. Questions there? And that's not a negative. That's an equal. We'll put that on the outside. All right, so then because 13 is so similar to 14, I want you to try that one now. So the calculator could really only help you with like your coefficients um, or like the adding or multiplying, whatever you need to do. But like if you tried putting in x to the 10, or let me put the fraction mark first. If you tried putting in x to the 10 over x to the cubed, it won't tell you anything really. So don't rely on it. If you're using something that tells you, that's like not allowed. <laughs> Whatever app that is that you're using, you can't use on a test. So just keep that in mind. But if you needed to know like what 10 minus three is, knock yourself out. You just have to know what rule to apply. Um, but the fraction part, so like 9 over 27, if you're not good at simplifying fractions, put it into your calculator. When you get that decimal, press this fraction button, and that's already simplified for you. That's what we got by hand, but you could get it in the calculator if that's like a struggle for you. All right, so finish number 14. I'll give you like Less than a minute. All right, so if you did every step correctly, then your final answer would be two a cubed b to the fifth. All right, so I chose that one as you try because it's really similar to 13. So you can use your listening and then can apply it to different numbers. So figure out what to do first using order of operation. Um, there's no parentheses in that one. I mean, there is, but inside the parentheses is already simplified. So we are on to the next step, which is x one. All right, and we do have this raised to the power of three. So we would do that first. And that's what you can see on my numerator. All right, two cubed is eight. Two times two times two is eight. Um, and then you use a power rule when you raise a power to a power. Two times three is six on the A, and then four times three is 12 on the B. And we just copy the denominator because that'll be our next step. Question so far. All right, so then when it is division, take the coefficients like normal, eight divided by four is, Two. And then on the variables, apply that quotient rule. What do I do with the exponents in that case? So then 6 minus 3 is, and 12 minus 7 is, so you can pair up the same basis. What do I do if, say, like, I don't know, I had a C in here, and there's no C to divide it by? 
and they just like magically go away. It would not magically go away. It would just be part of your answer. That's like dividing by one. Okay. But there's no C in this problem. No, exactly. All right, good. Um, these ones are similar. You do the power rule first, and then you divide. So maybe I'll save those for later. Um, this one, let's do together. So number 17, we're taking everything in the parentheses to the power of three. So now it goes to the numerator and denominator. Every single little thing will be cubed. So what is two cubed? Eight. And then what do I do with the exponent when it's a power to the power? So the n will be good. The n will be good. And you also have to do it for the denominator around the whole thing, not just the numerator. But it's four cubed. Okay. Um, four times four is 16, 16 times four does sound like it's 64, so that's good. M to the second and then times it by three would be good, and to the sixth, and then N will be to what power? Three, because what is here if it's not written? The so one times three is. Okay, questions on that? Is it fully simplified? So keep going then. Um, that eight over 64, don't yell it out yet. I want everyone to try it, even if it's like really quickly on the phone. I recommend Desmos having that your phone type later. Or if you know how to simplify by hand, great. But eight over 64 simplifies to what? One eighth is correct. As eight goes into itself one time and it goes into 64, how many times? Eight. All right, and then you keep going. What do I do with the variables? So the M will be, and the N will be good. All right, so using that same logic, I'll have you guys try 19 now, because that one's pretty similar to the one we just did. So if you did every step correctly, then your final answer would be 16 over 25 and B squared. Okay, so um, trick is you can knowing your order of operations. So always do the exponents before any division. If you divided this out first and then raised it to the power of two, that's a common mistake, okay, don't do that. Exponents before divide. So then you, everything in the parentheses will be raised to the second power. So then four squared is how I got 16. And then, of course, I'll apply that power rule to the variable. So it'll be a to the 1 times 2, which is 2, b to the 2 times 2, which is 4. And then don't forget, since it's around this entire fraction, you have to do it to the denominator 2. So 5 squared is 25. a to the 1 squared is a squared. a to the 1 times 2 is 2. Put there. All right, now you can do the dividing. Um, notice, is there anything that goes into 16 and 25 other than one? No, and if you try putting it in your calculator, like doing that trick I showed you, um, and then you saw that the fraction was the same thing, that's because it can't be simplified anymore. But still, that's one of the good, a good tool for that. Why did the A go away? <laughs> Good, perfect. So what you guys said is the same. So, well, I mean, not the same, but both correct. Um, when you have the same thing on top and bottom of a fraction, what does it equal? One. And then if you apply the quotient rule, two minus two is 
which anything to the zero power is. And if there's other stuff going on in the problem, you don't need to write time one. Okay, so it would just be whatever is being multiplied by. And then your quotient rule on the B, four minus two is. Okay, question. All right. Um, let's see. Let's do it with some uh, multiplication thrown in there. And let's try. So let's look at 25. So aside from the power rule, this one has all the other rules. It has the adding, subtracting, it has the multiplying, it has the dividing. So I like these. I feel like they're fun. But, um, you have to know which one to do first. So what will I do first? Will I multiply? Will I divide? Will I subtract? You would multiply first. All right, not because it's parentheses, okay? There's no, like, there's nothing to simplify in the parentheses. There's nothing raised to a power that we need to do. So you check, and this is in the same step, multiplication or division. Um, when it's set up in a fraction, you need the entire numerator and the entire denominator to be, like, simplified before you can divide them. So that's why we're going to multiply first this time. So multiply the coefficients. What's eight times negative three? Negative 24. And then C times C to the fourth would give me E to the fifth is correct. Because when we multiply the same base, that when you multiply the same base, you add the exponent. It's always like opposite of what you do with the coefficient. So C to the one plus four would be five. Um, there's no other D in the numerator, so just copy it over. Copy over everything else. And now the question is, what do I do? Divide or subtract? <laughs> divide. So that comes before subtraction always. So now divide. What's well, negative 24 divided by 6? <laughs> negative 4. Apply your quotient rule on the same basis. So it'll be C to what power? C to what power? Two, because there's a one here. Three minus one is two. And then bring down that other term. Questions of that? <laughs> All right, then do I, or well, the only operation left is to subtract. Can I subtract these? Are they like terms? Yeah. Yeah, they're both C cubed D squared. So yeah, I can subtract them, but you're only combining the coefficients. So then what is negative four minus nine? Negative 13, so for you to put it in the calculator, I know integers are hard for some of you. So negative 13 is negative four minus nine. And then you leave the variable part alone in that rule. All right, combining like terms, just combine the coefficients, don't change the variables or exponents. Questions there? All right, then I'll have you try 26 because that one is pretty similar to that one. Try 26. Right now, if you did every step correctly, then your final answer should be 11 r to the 7 as squared.
All right, if not, just figure out where you went wrong. So order of operations, we have multiplication, division, and adding. In this situation, we would multiply first. I can't divide these out until they're like one unit. So that kind of tells you. Um, eight times three is 24. And when I multiply the R's, what do I do with the exponents? Add that. So R to the fifth times R cubed gives me R to the eighth because you're supposed to add up the exponents. R to the two times, or sorry, S squared times S to the fourth, Adam gives the four again. And then I just copied everything over. Now between division and addition, what do we do first? So do that. Well, 24 divided by 12 is good. And what do I do with the exponents on the R's now? And it's eight minus one. That's what it's implied to be if it's not written. So that gives me R to the seven. Six minus four gives me a two on the S. Lastly, bring down that other thing I haven't touched yet. See if you can even add them. Sometimes they're not like terms and you can't, and then you're just stuck. But these are both r to the seven s squared. So that means combine the coefficients, two plus nine is, and then leave the rest alone. But still, it's in your answer. Just don't change that part. So, questions on that? All right, um, hold on, let me finish um, giving you instructions. So that concludes our notes, really. Um, just some mixed practice and introducing the new rule. Now we're gonna practice all the rules we've learned so far. And I'll pass out the paper now. It's a find someone who. And because it's more like a project, I wanna put it in the assessment category, so make it good. I'll give you 10 points just for participating, and then the other 10 will be based on accuracy. And that, again, that's going in the assessment category. There's not much stuff in there right now. So everything impacts your grade a lot right now. So, so we've done this before, but for the new people, and maybe just anyone who forgot, um, the find someone who's, you basically walk around the classroom and find someone who can answer like number one and then find someone who can answer number two. It has to be a different person for each box. So you will probably also be asked to solve some problem. Um, that's, I think, a fair agreement. Like I solve one off of yours and you solve one off of mine. And then this will eat up probably the last time we have today. And then you'll have some time to If you get stuck, I do have a knee on the wall, but it's not for you to take pictures of or directly copy from. All right, so everyone confused on what we're doing. So maybe start with your table mates, getting some answers from them, and then walk around and the rest of your answers. Showing work is required. <laughs> also, you'll want to go back and make sure whoever answered yours did it right, since the other 10 is based on accuracy also. Okay. <laughs>